So we've looked at um, plant guilds and the roles of different plants and how you can uh, create layers uh, within it to create food forests. So looking at you know some of the roles of the different layers of a food forest and how you can uh, beneficially um, integrate those layers together. Um, one thing you'll probably want to do to, to kind of create the, mo the most productivity of that, you, you want to kind of ongoing um, ongoingly add sources of nutrients to that system to maintain it at its uh, most productive rate. So you, you'll be wanting to add kind of compost teas or foliar sprays. So you're trying to pick a, a fertility program uh, to improve the soil condition that is easy enough to do in a, in a two to 20 acre site. So generally a permaculture orchard, you're looking at a uh, two to 20 acre size. Um, it's going to be productive species. It's going to be quite an intense production system. Um, there's going to be quite a lot of diversity in that production system, but it's going to be tailored towards um, certain species if you're doing it commercially that um, there's a good commercial market for and, and you can harvest them e and economically and the um, food forests and plant guilds are there to kind of support that production and supply materials to um, improve the fertility of the soil and the growth of your, your main productive species. But you know you want you might want to supplement that production with compost teas and foliar sprays. So uh, compost teas are just taking a um, big barrel normally, and what you generally want to do is aerate it because if you aerate the water that the um, compost is in, so you've you've got your your compost added to that, and it might be in a sack. So it doesn't uh, leak into the water, or it could be just fish, uh, dead fish that you add to that, or it could be manures. Um, so it could be fish, it could be um, compost, it could be um, weeds, um, it could be you know nutrient accumulators, which are kind of like weeds, but <laughs> they have a different name for them. Or it could be nitrogen fixators. Uh, or it could be dead animals, or manures. So some source of organic fertility that you're adding into the system. So basically all of these are uh, sources of organic matter. And what you want to do is make sure that there's some addition of microorganisms to that mix. So you want to add microorganisms and, and that would be from a healthy soil. So it would be from a nice garden compost that you've made or from the soil that's already out in the orchard that already has that range of microorganisms that you want to um, inoculate this mix with. So add microorganisms from uh, good quality compost. And once you've got that compost organic matter, and you've got your water, and you've got a big barrel, and you just want to oxygenate that. So you may have it uh, connected to a um, an electrical aerator. It could be uh, blowing air through it, so like a, a big version of a, a fish tank bubbler, or it could be a little motorized um, paddle that churns around and oxygenates it, or it could be a um, kind of lever that moves around and kind of churns it up, or it could be something you do by hand. Um, the um, oh, I'm forgetting. Anyway. Um, if you mix up with hand, you know, you can um, oxygenate it that way, although you're limited by the oxygen you add while you're mixing it. So you've got to mix it and then apply it quite freshly. But ideally you want to oxygenate it for um, somewhere around 10 hours, which is pretty hard to do by hand. So um, it's quite good to do it mechanically, I think. 
But if you do it by hand, um, you probably want to spend a good hour doing it. And by doing that oxygenating process, what you're doing is you're creating an environment within here that is going to favorably select the, the aerobic soil microorganisms. So you're selecting um, aerobic soil microorganisms. And you're doing that by increasing the oxygen content in the water by stirring it. So you're, you're tuning it all up, you're increasing the aerobic soil organisms that are going to be most beneficial to your soil when you, you dispense this um, compost tea. And then you want to um, use some efficient method to dispense it. And you want to use it quite fresh. So as soon as that water stops churning and it stagnates, the oxygen, you know, all this organic matter is in there and it's going to um, stagnate quite quickly, particularly if there's a lot of nitrogen in it. If there's dead animals and manures and things, there's going to be a lot of nitrogen in it. And that's going to create conditions that will favour the anaerobic soil organisms. And a lot of them can be quite toxic to plants. So you want to keep it aerobic and you want to use it quickly. So these are, you know, you're probably your, your main points here is, is keep conditions aerobic and use quickly. So once you've disconnected your pump and you're ready to dispense it, you can put it on the back of your four-wheel drive or your backpack and and dis, you know, this dispense it uh, through your orchard crop. And it's just a way of um, taking quite a, a, a small source of nutrients, um, spreading that source of nutrients through a medium that can be distributed on a larger scale more easily, so water. And in that water, you know, increasing the concentration of your beneficial soil organisms by aerating it. And you're just creating this, this um, fluid, nutrient-rich, uh, microorganism-rich um, compost tea that can be spread out fairly effectively over an orchard that's you know, 2 to 20 acres in size. So you're trying to pick a method of increasing the fertility that suits the scale and the production requirements of that particular system. And it's not, you know, the sole source of nutrients in the system. Ideally, you've got the nutrient accumulators and the nitrogen fixators and the ground covers and the grazers in the system too. But it's, it's another way of improving the conditions to increase the productivity of it and the yield of it. And this is particularly important in the initial stages. So when the soil microorganism community might be quite poor, and the growth of the plants would be quite slow, so they haven't really had a chance to establish themselves in the soil and, and improve the soil conditions. These treatments can speed up the process of the improvement of that soil to a point where the plants will grow more vigorously and, and uh, grow bigger roots and start to take a, a stronger hold on, on that environment that will help support their growth. So it's a great um, initial preparation of that site. But on an ongoing maintenance, you know, a, a top up of compost tea once a year will really help boost production, particularly, um, you know, coming up before um, flower production and before fruit production. So any time where the plant's putting out um, a lot of biological material and flowers or fruit, it's going to be hungry for resources in that soil. So if you're feeding the soil at that time, it will help promote the growth of the flowers or the fruit that will give you a good yield. Uh, foliar sprays are a little bit of a variation on a compost tea and really I guess with the compost tea your focus is on the um, addition of that fertilizer to the soil and with a foliar spray it's more on the leaves of the plant and there's slightly different objectives of each one so the foliar spray is often applied to a, a larger scale because um, you, you don't need quite as much of it, you, so you're just kind of 
um, apply it to your foliar area and, and you can do that more easily over a bigger scale than a more concentrated compost tea where you're, you're adding it to the bases of the trees normally and letting it soak into the soil. And um, the, there's, there's a few different, um, I guess, guiding concepts between each one. So with the compost tea, that's really a recognition of you're trying to feed the soil organisms with a source of organic matter and nutrients and also inoculate the soil with a beneficial community of soil microorganisms to help you know, promote the growth of that microorganism community in that soil. With a foliar spray, you're adding it to the leaves of the plant and your objectives are for the plant to absorb those nutrients um, through its leaves instead of through its um, roots. So there's an increasing appreciation that plants can absorb um, quite a few nutrients through its leaves as well as through its uh, roots. And uh, out competing the bad fungi and microorganisms that could be living on the leaves of that plant. So, you know, some of those bad fungi can cause molds and viruses to spread throughout the foliage of those plants. So, by spraying on a um, beneficial um, microorganism uh, foliar spray, you're out competing the bad ones. Um, so they're less likely to, to gain a foothold in that system and, and have a damaging impact. And um, what, what the objective is with a foliar spray too is, is you're trying to really increase the rate of photosynthesis. So you're trying to support the ability of the plant to send out increasing uh, better quality and more diverse range of exudates into the soil to improve the soil um, microorganism community through what the plant is providing it. So instead of providing a compost tea, where it's you providing the source of nutrients and, and microorganisms to the soil, you're supporting the function of the plant with a foliar spray to do that itself. And it's recognized that um, plants are actually a lot better at this than we are. So they um, have got quite complex interactions in the soil and they know um, the, the kind of microorganisms they want to attract into that community better than we do. And if we just support the function of the plant, they can better um, create that beneficial soil microorganism community than we can. So. Um, you're just trying to you know, support the growth of the plant with a beneficial um, product or foliar spray that they can absorb some of the nutrients from their leaves, increase their rate of photosynthesis and, and, and help um, that process of uh, building their own soil community. Um, I guess one last point would be um, some of the additional minerals and nutrients into it. So in, in the compost tea and foliar spray, um, there may be particular nutrients that are um, not in good supply in your soil and that may be because you know the pH is not quite right and they're just being locked up because the, the pH is um, in a, at a level that doesn't make those nutrients very available or it could be that there's just very poor biology to help build the um, uh, aggregate or crumb structure in that soil that will hold on to those nutrients and supply it or if there's no fungi you know there's there's no network to distribute those nutrients in the soil but I guess initially when you're trying to establish a system it can be beneficial to supply those nutrients yourself so if you do a soil test that can be quite useful to see what your soil is missing and include those minerals and nutrients into your foliar and, and compost teas as a way of boosting them and concentration in your soil to immediately kind of elevate the levels of those, those deficient nutrients in your soil.